You should still be in the audience. You should be one of those signs. Like, we love Joey. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor recap listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. It's Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. We thought we would dress for the occasion. We're both wearing pink-ish. The only pink socks of Andy's. Do you want to just show them? Yeah, this is, these are the only socks Andy has that are pink. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> we do have housekeeping. Well, obviously we're back in New York, but we have big news. We will be recapping Love is Blind season six ongoing this year. So this is the first time ever we'll be recapping two shows at the same time, kind of. Happy? Happy? No. <laughs> this is by popular request. A lot of you missed us recapping season five last year. We were too overwhelmed with all no. the, there was like double seasons going on, but we felt like we could probably manage it this time. Yeah, it feels like we may have missed a bad season too. Oh, I think we were right to not have yeah, recapped it. we got it. lucky. Yes, but I'm feeling good. Season six, everyone's been asking for it. And yeah. we did enjoy recapping season four. Oh yeah. A lot. So oh, yeah. I'm look, actually looking forward to it. Yeah. Not, not joking. Okay. Do you feel ready to get recapping episodes four and five? of mm -hmm. Bachelor, season 28. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay, so with episode four, we're going way back in time to post-pool party. Mm -hmm. uh, the ladies are sort of recapping the drama. I loved here how Autumn used air quotes to say pool party. Mm, yeah. She even said there was no party at all, which no, really is. not much pool either. Jesse arrives to do the usual. This thing is really working. Joey can really see his wife in this room, blah, blah, blah. He reveals they're headed to Malta, mm. which, Andrew, you called random. Yeah, the highest bidder. Malta. Is that what they do? They just put it out to Europe? They're like, who, who do we got? Who's got the best hotel? Who's got the best amenities? I honestly think it's almost entirely decided based on which hotel or resort is willing to not only, you know, house them all for free, but also like all the crew. Right. You know, it's not just the room we see on TV or Joey's room and the ladies room. It's like every room for every crew member. Yeah. So they go for the best deal, right? I think so. And it's anywhere in Europe is fine. Oh, Mal no. Yeah. And then we're not Malta's dissing on Malta. Totally fine. We have been to Malta. Yeah. It was nice. But it was just one day on a cruise stop. Yeah. It feels like that kind of place where it's got the most cachet for the least price of all the things you could do in Europe. <laughs> so in Malta, Joey looks particularly good in a black and white polo t shirt. I had to point this out. Yeah. I thought he looked really good. Yeah. He, he always looks good. That's what he does. He looks great. <laughs> That's his job. Yeah. And there's a cute ITM here of him with his puns. I love these glimpses into his actual personality. I feel like by the end of his season, we'll know who he is. You know, I like Joey. Me too. I've warmed to him. And you know what else I like about Joey? Very few likes. Have you noticed that? You're right. The, the least number of likes of any bachelor I've seen. He takes his time. He's measured. He thinks about what he's going to say. He doesn't just fill the space. No. And he's very self-deprecating, like very humble. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't mean that as a diss. I just mean like with Joey, he's he is such a chameleon socially, yeah. I find. I think he ad would admit it, actually. Sure. So I felt like, you know, when you see him sort of like laughing at himself and like giggling in these moments, I'm like, there he is. It's exciting to see. Yeah, he's grown up before our eyes. <laughs> All grown up. The ladies move into their hotel and a date card promptly arrives and it's for Lexi. We knew this was coming. She and Joey stroll around, get pastries, where the vendor, of course, asks if they're married. That's a big you can't have a one-on-one -on -one in a foreign country and not no. have a complete stranger ask if of you're married. Course. Back at the hotel, there are two girl chats going on, uh, one with Maria and Allison, one with Sydney and Jess. <laughs> Andy, when you saw this, you said Jess is back on my shit list. Yeah, she should have never left. Yeah, it was we a lapse of judgment on. on my part. I have to point out the contrast. It really is striking here because in Maria's girl chat with Allison, she's talking about how she wants to put it behind her. She wants to move on. She wants to snuff this. Meanwhile, Sydney with Jess is talking about how disappointed she is that Joey kept Maria. She thinks Maria must have said something. Her mind is occupied by Maria. She's exhausted, lethargic. She's breaking out some of this i think could have been frank and bitten together but i think the gist is true which is that sydney sydney likes to get sydney's way yeah likes to play the victim and likes to get her way it's and usually probably does get her way 100 
I think it works for her a lot of the time yeah. in real life. Obviously, there's a lot more of that to get to. So we'll move on. Back on the date, Lexi is having an out-of-body experience in a church in Malta. And then the priest comes and asks if they have any questions for him. And Lexi asks what he thinks the secret to a long, happy marriage is. And he says, happiness. <laughs> mm. I mean, that, is, that life, is good circular reasoning. He says, life is short. And he tells them they look good together and basically tells them to have kids. Four kids is from what I heard. It sounded like he said, don't forget to have four children, unless he meant four children something. I mean, obviously, English was not his native language. I'm not really sure what he said here, but the gist was you should make babies. Yeah, fast and in the church <laughs> while he's watching. <laughs> Lexi in her ITM takes that as, quote, one of the most important parts of marriage is building a family. I mean, this is very, I think, dated, but also very on brand for The Bachelor. And of course, it ties in Lexi's particular storyline, which is that she may have issues with fertility. Andy, you thought the priest was possibly told to tell them to have kids. I feel like that was that he was fed that. Yeah. That's a weird thing to say. It didn't really fit completely. I mean, well, maybe it's not. just so wrong. Yeah. Like, I, I want to believe that that could not happen, so that, you, that it was just chance. Because knowing Lexi, you know, her storyline from the beginning, her hometown package in episode one, she touched on how it was a really sensitive s subject for her. She's not sure if she can have children of her own. She's always wanted kids. It makes me feel ugh, to think that this priest was told to tell her to have kids. Mm. Uh, mm. Oh, man. I guess I still have a little more faith than you. <laughs> Back at the hotel, the group date card arrives. It's for Jen, Daisy, Edwina, Caitlin, Allison, Rachel, Autumn, Kelsey, T, Jess, Medina, Leia, and Kelsey, A. It says true love is worth fighting for. It's clear now that there will be a two-on-one. <sighs> We've seen this previewed between Sydney and Maria. Of mm -hmm. course, yeah. Sydney starts playing victim here. She says in her ITM that she didn't deserve this. Yeah, she doesn't deserve anything it's just, except good things. It's just, I, the, from my perspective, she ensured this. Yeah. She's the one who made this so. Yeah, she could have let it go. No one deserves it more than her. Yeah. This two-on-one was created for her. She made her bed. Yes. She dug her grave. In the evening now, Lexi reveals that she had stage five endometriosis. She required surgery and was told she might not be able to have her own kids. And she reveals she told her ex this information and he ended the relationship over this. Mm, wow. Yeah. Because he couldn't be with someone who could not have his biological children. I mean, wow. Joey, of course, handles this very well. He says it doesn't scare him. These situations make one stronger. There's so much more to her than just that. She's moved to tears by his response. And even as he's presenting her with this rose, uh, he is misty eyed himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it was really him. lovely. I will say though, this date overall, as lovely as this conversation was, and I really it was you really felt this moment of connection between them. Like he seemed so deeply moved by her story. That said, what I lacked overall in this date, and we kind of touched on it last week, was a levity, a sort of humor, yeah. even during the day, you know, before it became about this. There's just a seriousness to their dynamic that I don't picture being a long-term thing. I agree. There seems to be something there. Yeah. Like he, he really does care for her. Maybe there's an attraction physically. Yeah. But you're right. It's missing that playfulness. Yeah. And last week I said, even when she is playful with him, when she did the sort of like stick figure painting and things like that, or kissed him in front of everyone, I don't know. It just felt sort of forced. I just, uh, yeah. I, Lexi is one of those people that, I mean, I had her in second on night one and now I'm kind of like, uh -huh. usually a one-on-one -on -one date makes me want to put someone in the first spot, but that didn't happen here. Yeah. I'm also questioning my positioning of Lexi. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the fertility story. It's really no. more so their dynamic. Yeah. Okay. So this group date, now, Joey meets the ladies at Fort Manuel where Ned Stark was beheaded Yes, in Game of Thrones. The That's beginning of a dynasty. I remember that episode and I had not been really getting into the show up until that point because it's not my favorite genre. You know, that middle agey fantasy stuff. Okay. But when they executed Ned Stark, I was like, wow, the show has balls. Yeah. Because that was the guy you expect to see in the last episode of the season finale. Yeah. Should we be saying spoiler alert? <laughs> 
for Game of Thrones. I mean, shame on you if that is. <laughs> it's true. Turns out they're going to learn how to be knights that day. They're given costumes, and this is super cute, uh, like how they're all like, they're like, oh, we look pretty good in our costumes. And the winner of this knight challenge will win extra time with Joey. The challenges are mostly silly. Obviously, the main one is this sausage wheel no. where it's like, whirring around and they have to catch a sausage in their mouth it looked pretty gross they've created sport out of wasting food it's not just wasting food it's wasting animal animal food food. yeah you know what's interesting to me is that you can not harm an animal in filming of anything Mm -hmm. which obviously i approve of yeah but yet you can mock a dead animal one might argue that they're not mocking it they're just mock eating it (laughs) Well, if you were turned into sausage and then someone played a game of people trying to bite your no. sausage in their mouth. When you put it like that. Would you feel mocked? No, it's true. I would feel mocked. Uh, I would feel like I, I hadn't died for a good reason. You'd feel horrible. Yeah, your whole family would be very upset. My whole family. I love that Joey joins in to do this. This says so much about him. He easily could have watched from the sidelines and played judge, but he was like, I don't want to make them do something I wouldn't do myself. And so he joins them. I really liked this about him. Oh, absolutely. There are a lot of bachelors who have been sort of, you know, seen as gallant who wouldn't have done this. No, Joey is quietly gallant. Also, once again, Autumn shined. Mm, in this nice. scene. She's really great. I just don't think she had a connection with Joey. No. she. I don't think she tried that hard either. I think she was just having a sort of a nice time on the show. Totally. I think Autumn 100% was like, I know I'm not winning. I'm just yeah. here for an experience. Yeah. I so like she Autumn. wins this extra time, but it's like no one believes Autumn's going far. Joey no. doesn't think so. She doesn't think so. We don't think so. Yeah. And thus not a single word of this conversation is shown. We just see them making out. That's it. Okay, so now it's the evening. Kelsey A. Joey says that even in the group, he's always focused on her. I thought that was pretty huge. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, she's wearing glasses, so he pulls out his. We learn he's blind as a bat. Yeah. That's something you have in common, Andy. I was surprised. He seems like a very perfect specimen physically. Mm. Yes. But I I felt good. I felt good that other people are also blind. You you also seem like a perfect specimen, and you are also blind, so there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Kelsey T, she's wearing a fabulous neon strapless bandage dress. I had to point this out. Mm-hmm. Kelsey T, she's got good style. She does. And they talk love languages here. He says he's all about quality time. She says action is what works for her, which leads into a very natural kiss. Another thing, I mean, we're leading with a lot of positivity here. I love how Joey goes in for kisses. Mm-hmm. Just goes right in. He, yeah, but he like reads the room. He lets it. He lets like the magnet bring them together. Mm. There's he, not. He a, never goes in too soon. Or and he breaks the moment by being like, "May I kiss you?" Yeah, now? it's time for us to kiss. Yes, here I go. You know why? Because I have to say, Joey's cool. He is. He's not awkward. He's very chill. Yep. Things happen organically with him. Back at the hotel, there's a three-person girl chat. Andy, you said, why are they sitting together? Okay, you don't have to poke fun. (laughs) I figured it out fast. It's so cute when you say these things. So in this girl chat, obviously, are Sydney, Maria, and Lexi in the middle. Mm -hmm, Yeah. You know, they're they're told to do this. How does how does the person get chosen who's the the reader of the card? Um, they often say just so and so will you go get the day card or so and so do you want to read the day card just random but yeah i was asked to do it once or twice and i I didn't turn to to. (laughs) declined (laughs) was there anything you did that you were asked to do so of course the two-on-one date card arrives and maria says they all saw this coming she's going to do her best to focus on joey meanwhile of course sydney's saying she's determined to get maria sent home what job number one and who's the bully Who's the bully? Back on the date now, Jess in her ITM, going into her time with Joey, says she wants to tell Joey how she's feeling. Andy, you said she's going home. (laughs) (laughs) You end up being wrong, Andy. Uh, Because it turns out Jess has much more to offer than just her relationship with Joey. She's not going home because she's Jess, not because of how Joey feels about her. Mm, That's true. She tells Joey she's falling for him. In my opinion, she comes on a little too strong here. She was giving me like the opposite of what one should do in dating vibes. If I'm totally honest, you agree with me. 100%. She was just coming. She was giving borderline 
desperation vibes yeah. and not i'm not saying this about her in particular like i would say this about anyone saying this much about how much she feels about someone while receiving so little in return and joey pretty much seals this this moment with mm. a i wrote a sedated kiss yeah he's trying to get her away it's like a shooing away kiss yeah there's really nothing there and i feel like if she took a step back and stopped filling that space with telling him how much she likes him she would realize how little she's receiving in return and i think that this is a common mistake people make in dating in general yeah you know they're sort of blinded by what by how much they want the person that they are just sort of on the offense the whole time right they just try to get it Yes. Instead of receiving it and yes. letting it grow. And I do think if Joey were a slightly, only a hair more ruthless bachelor, he would have sent her home yeah. here. She stresses me out, Jess. Jess stresses me out, yeah. too. I wish she could kind of relax a bit more a la Autumn. Mm, yes. So Joey gives this group date rose to Kelsey T, mm, which yeah. is exciting. Yeah. I mean, I really like Kelsey T. I she is too. so cool. She's very cool. Can we talk about the fact, we only just realized it in this episode, that Kelsey T is also 31 years old? Yeah. She's just <laughs> one foot in the grave. <laughs> she's running out of time. I, and she's an actress in LA. She's got yeah. two clocks running against her. <laughs> well, isn't it funny how when you get an actual actress on the show, they're not actors like, no she's actually very on acting she's which vi- means she's a good actress i completely agree i bet you anything kelsey t's a phenomenal 100 percent. you want to know why because she has so much self-awareness that i don't think she could ever be an actress in la doing what she's doing if she wasn't good and didn't get yeah. work doing it absolutely Andy, i have an analogy Ooh. yes for what apostrophe means to me because apostrophe is an online service that connects me with board certified dermatologists so i can get prescription skincare delivered to our door but the best part of all is how it takes away choice we've said before that since we've cut meat out of our diet that one of the joys actually is dining out because it eliminates so many options meanwhile with skincare you know there are a lot of products out there but i love how all these big name brands whatever they all have their own retinols and retinoids and whatever that entire category i don't have to bother myself with because i already know i'm getting the very best of the best delivered to my door so so this was an analogy (laughs) I was comparing it to dining out. Okay. Less choice. You, you know, it's a good thing. You didn't stick the landing. Oh. But I think there's there's a very good presentation in there. Thank so you. I applaud you. Thank very you. Very nice. A minus? Is, B plus? Is a C plus. <laughs> so apostrophe, if you've been on the fence about going a little more hardcore with your skincare routine, I really cannot recommend it enough. And in the past, before apostrophe ever existed, I remember talking to my doctor and I was like, do I really need a prescription for this? And she was like, well, yeah, you can buy the -the over-the-counter retinol. There's just no comparison in which one's going to be more efficacious. Mm, Nice. Thanks. And that has always stuck with me. And so I see all these fancy brands with very, might I add, very expensive retinols. And I'm like, eh, I'm good because apostrophe has already done that work for me. After I fill out their online consultation where I take selfies of my skin and fill out what my skincare concerns are, a real board certified dermatologist reviews my information and then prescribes me something. And then that is shipped to my door. And isn't that what a great service is all about? You don't have to think about it anymore. Someone's at the wheel. When you you hail a taxi, you don't get in. The guy's like, oh, you know what? I'm a little tired. Why, why don't I jump in the back seat and you take care of the driving? It, oh, that you know? sounds stressful. Sounds horrible. Yeah, you just want to get in there and get driven. Yeah. An apostrophe drives you. Yeah, good. Okay. Now that's an analogy. <laughs> So we have a very special deal for our audience, the Shandies. Right now, you can get your first visit for only $5 when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and enter promo code Shandy at sign up. That is a savings of $15, and this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click get started. Then use our code Shandy at sign up, and you'll get your first visit for only $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Who the hell do you think you are to think that Viscos from Mabu is not right for you? Cozy Earth is the best. A very angry jingle, but it works. Who would Viscos from Bamboo by Cozy Earth not be for? A fool. <laughs> a fool. Only a fool would think that after all these years of us advertising Cozy Earth, you're wearing Cozy Earth. We dry ourselves with Cozy Earth towels. We sleep in Cozy Earth sheets. And we visited your home this past week in Canada. Yeah, my parents. And it was delightful. Mm-hmm. But there was one thing that didn't feel like home. Ah, uh, the bed. 
the sheets. And those are perfectly fine oh, sheets perfectly on, fine. on my bed in my bedroom. But they aren't cozy. They are not cozy earth. They don't have that silky, velvety texture that is somehow also cooling, which is a concern for you because yeah. you are a night sweater. Not so with cozy earth. Yes. And you know, I was thinking about names recently, brand names. And when you put a generic positive word in your brand name, mm-hmm. you better back it up. You know, that is a bold name when I think about it. Yeah, it's cozy. Earth, made from viscose from bamboo, which, by the way, is so much more sustainable than most fabrics. And when it comes to bed sheets, all these products are like large amounts of fabric, right? Towels, bed sheets, your lounge pants that you're wearing right now and that you're always wearing whenever we record this podcast. And actually, you're always wearing in general. Mm-hmm, that's right. Oh, yeah. You think this is only for podcasts? <laughs> I mean, all that fabric, I want to make sure that it is sustainable. And your mom has a bamboo tree in, yes. the, in the dining room. And I saw it back in August. Uh-huh. And it was like three feet tall. Yeah. It's now six feet tall. <laughs> Honestly, bamboo feels like it's meant to be used in all these ways. So. Bamboo is begging to be used for everything. Yes. And we're not listening. <laughs> Cozy's listening. <laughs> So if you've never tried Cozy Earth, I've got awesome news. You can save up to 35% on Cozy Earth right now, but hurry, this offer will not last. Go to CozyEarth.com slash Shandy and enter promo code Shandy at checkout to save up to 35%. That's CozyEarth.com slash Shandy. So now it's the next day. Heading into the two-on-one date, Sydney says she has a game plan and that spending the whole day with Maria is like spending the day with the devil. (laughs) I do think this might have been Frankenbitten. We did not see that part of the sentence come out of her mouth but we've seen enough come out of sydney's mouth that joey arrives does the usual i know this is awkward speech and takes them to the blue grotto and it's obvious here that maria is making a concerted effort to be positive Mm -hmm. i really like this about her me too she could have easily just been sullen and let the moment take over yeah she could have pouted the way Sydney is, yeah. you know, there's pouting a, the whole time, yeah. whining the whole way through the grotto. Yep. She, Every nook and cranny of she, that grotto <laughs> is besmirched by her negative attitude. Yeah. I love how she made it sound like she might have like claustro, like claustrophobia inside that. I don't think that, I, I think that's big enough. Yeah. I have some claustrophobia that I wouldn't, there's no way those walls are very far apart. Yeah. I mean, if you have phobia of the water, maybe there was not a ton of appreciating the present moment. You know what I think? I think there was that was the least appreciation of the moment of any human who's ever sailed through that grotto. I 100% yeah. agree. And that grotto has been around probably for a million years. It really did feel like her hubris probably prevents her from enjoying a lot of her life, her own life. Yeah. The beautiful experiences that she probably has every single day, yeah. but she's too focused on making sure she's right about something or making sure yes. that someone who she perceived as having wronged her is punished in some way. You know, it just sounds exhausting. She's sailing through the blue grotto in Malta and she's like, oh, yeah. like it's so negative. That grotto is a metaphor for her life. Yes. They sit and Joey asks how it's going and Sydney is immediately like, this is hard for me. <sighs> Everything's about her. It, she's always the victim in every situation. She is there because of what she's contributed to the situation. Yeah. And Maria's in the exact same position as her. In fact, Maria, you, you could deserves it far less and to also, be on that date. And also Joey is in a very awkward position. Yes. And you, she, should be, she should be thinking about him a little more too. Yeah, no. Like it's not like he's having a, a party in this grotto. In her ITM, she says her body is taking a toll. She's having stomach issues from the stress of not knowing if Maria will be in a room ready and waiting to attack her. <laughs> 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 in her one-on-one time, Sydney immediately, of course, starts throwing Maria under the bus. She says this is hard for her. She claims he left the pool party and Maria attacked her again. And then that Maria told Leia to shut the fuck up. Now, oh boy, we didn't see this. I don't think this happened. It didn't happen. Yeah. Because Maria said, I mean, Maria, you know, this is recorded. Yes. So you know it didn't happen. It's so fascinating how she thinks she can just do this and there's no fact checking. She's pathological. She is so into herself. She's so into her being right all the time. She's so sure that she is always right and she is always the best in any situation that she thinks she can overcome the laws of physics. 
<laughs> the laws that say a camera actually records sound and video uh -huh. for others to see and hear. It makes you wonder how many things she's also lying about that yeah. can't be proven with yeah, the lack exactly. of camera footage. If she's going to lie about being one of two people in an elevator yeah, farting yeah. and then saying she didn't fart, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else is she talking behind your back totally. about? Totally. Joey basically says he needs to hear both sides. And now with Maria... Once again, we have to point out the stark contrast. Maria doesn't want to talk about this in no. her one-on-one -on -one time. He keeps pressing for more information, and he finally mentions the Leia thing, and she says, absolutely not, she did not say that, but she's clearly more focused on, like, she just wants to spend time with him and talk about them. You know, she doesn't yeah, want to talk please. about the Sydney stuff. And I just think that really says it all. That is a microcosm for this entire You're Not Old saga. Yes. Maria confronts Sydney now and says, you know, we're on camera, right? And Sydney says, Maria, you have not taken ownership for all the things you've done and said, and Joey deserves to know. And notice that Sydney does not take ownership of the lie. No. She ignores it, almost saying, yes, of course I lied. Yeah. Because how else am I going to yeah. bury you? Yeah. I'm just trying to make you take ownership. So I lied to try and make that happen right. somehow. <laughs> because people like Sydney see lying as just a means to an end. Yes. It's not like, you know, it's not like a white lie where you're like, oh, your hat looks lovely and it's a terrible hat it's like she's actually using it as a as a weapon maria says that she has owned the things that she said she even lists some of them yeah. and says that she's had no problems with anyone in the house except sydney and sydney says maria's caused problems for everyone in the house and maria says where is everyone else with these accusations exactly maria handles this so beautifully i have mm -hmm. to say considering it's in the moment like i would be seeing red of course if someone went to joey like in this situation if you put yourself in maria's shoes in this situation Situation. It's one thing to do like a he said, she said, you know, just sort of disagreeing and like tattling on each other. Yeah. It's another thing to be like, she said this and she actually never said it. Well, this is 101 in how to deal with this situation. I've been watching Maria. I've been learning because the more she loses her cool, we talked about the quicksand, the more she's going to start looking guilty. Yeah. So she has to ride this fine middle <sighs> line of being like, no, I didn't do that, but I'm not going to lose it. Andy, you said Sydney should be careful like in life. Yeah. Do you want to explain? Well, I think that she's coming off so badly in this show. Yeah. That she's getting to the point where she's might damage her actual real life. She, I mean, it's too late now. Well, I mean, we're almost there, but it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be too late soon. She went a little too far. Yeah. For what? For, for, for you know what? For revenge. For revenge. Let's, get, let's really call a spade a spade here. What she wants is revenge. Yeah. She's not offended by Maria, call, like, uh, not validating Medina's feelings. No. She didn't give a shit about that. What she was upset was, was Maria calling her out yeah. for turning it into something it wasn't. But that's classic behavior of a certain type yeah. <laughs> where you must at all costs mm -hmm. protect your ego. Yes. Nothing can harm your ego. Yeah. That is job number one. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of comments last yeah. week from people, also emails from people who called Sydney extremely triggering. Yeah. There was one comment from someone who had been in a work situation and she said that she didn't know who, the, like that Sydney oh, was a Sydney type know until Sydney. she had been there for a long time. And all of a sudden, like overnight, half the people in the office oh, hated her. Unbelievable. And you really see this play out, especially over episode five as well. We never see these so-called offensive interactions that Maria has with these women, but they all just automatically hate her. And you know, what's interesting is people have brought up, why are the other ladies not coming to her defense. Mm -hmm. And I think there's two reasons. I, they're scared, first of all. Number one, they're scared, yes. of course. So they're first charmed by Sydney, uh -huh. but then they are suddenly trapped in the, the, that loyalist circle. Because oh my God, like Scientology. They, yeah, you can't get out. Yeah. It's like a Roach Motel or Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> Scientology is going to have issue with that comparison. I might, <laughs> I might get some calls. Anyway, you are trapped mm -hmm. once you're in that Sydney circle because you don't want to be on the outside. Yeah. You do not want to be on the opposite end of a Sydney I battle. Think, I think that happens with Medina. But that's, oh, absolutely that happened with Medina. Yeah. But that's only one part of it. Yeah. The other part is a little less flattering to the women. And it's understandable is that they don't want to go to Joey and tell him, hey, you really got to go easy on Maria. She's great. All the stuff Sydney's saying is BS because Maria's a front runner. And mm. if I'm competing with Maria, 
I don't want to go in and give Maria, who might get booted because of this drama, and mm-hmm. give me an advantage. I don't want to give her any more advantage than she already has. Mm. And I understand that from a gameplay perspective. It's not, it's kind of, it's kind of weak. I don't know if I totally I, agree with that. Oh, I, I 100% think that's happening. Same as Survivor or any show. Why would you go to the lead and be like, hey, she's not doing all the bad things that Sydney says. She's great. And then Joey's like, sweet. I just, uh, I just think that that's a really like uh, simplistic way of looking at this. Like to say that, it's just gameplay. They just want Joey. They want to get rid of their competition. Survivor's a competition for money. This is like a romantic relationship. Like you have to mainly let the chips fall where they may in this okay. experience because it is feelings based. So I think it's a little too simplistic to be like, well, Maria's a front runner and therefore I'm going to let her just be raked over the coals. Okay. That's not my problem. Some people maybe did stand up, especially like an Allison or an Edwina, but it wasn't shown. Okay. I think that that's extremely possible. Okay. Understandable. I'm not saying that that's, I'm not I, no. saying I'm for sure right. And I if, just. And even if you're not right, and that, that's, that's perfectly possible what you just said. But I think that if you're not right, it's also the risk of bringing up drama. Like why would they spend their time? Why would they bring that into the yeah, conversation? It's wasting their time. That's the number one reason. In that setting, you do not want to even buy a, you don't want to be just like, you don't want your name attached yeah. to it at you, all. You don't even want to say, you know, the thermostat is set a little yeah. low in this house. <laughs> you know? <laughs> We know why the Sydney loyalists are doing what they're doing. More or less, yeah. yeah. But it's I a, think they're brainwashed. <laughs> absolutely. And they're scared. But it's yeah. disappointing to see no one standing up for Maria. Yes, very. Now it's the evening. Always hilarious to see the two people on a two on one date, like all dolled up. Like Maria and Sydney both look very beautiful sitting just yeah. at this three person table. <laughs> yeah, like quietly. Heading into it, Joey in his voiceover says, Today was my first and hopefully my last two on one. Andy, you loved this. <laughs> you don't hear that every day from a guy. <laughs> Joey asks Sydney if she thinks there's a potential future with him. This was hilarious. This felt very produced. Yeah. Like in front of the late both ladies, he's like, So Sydney. Do you see a future with us? How about you, Maria? Do you see a future? Nope. No future. <laughs> and what's interesting here is that they take a different tack from each other here. Like Sydney is like, yes, I see a future with you. That's why I'm fighting for you. That's why I'm putting myself through this. It shows what kind of a partner I would be. I would fight for you. Yeah. You know, Everything is like she's at war all the time. God, that sounds tiring. Yeah, she's fighting for her life. Always. Yeah. Can you imagine if, if she just flicked that switch in her mind. It's not all a battle. You don't need to win all the time. Yeah. Think Imagine. about how much more free time Just she would let have. let go. Let go. <laughs> yes. Maybe sometimes you're wrong. Maybe sometimes you do something that people don't like and Maybe it's okay. Maybe sometimes you can agree to disagree. Maybe yeah. someone disagreeing with you gently is not a betrayal yeah. and therefore like disloyal. Yeah. And maybe if someone did something that wasn't nice to you, you can just ignore it. Yes. Rise above it. Yeah. Maybe. Just maybe. Yeah, a little bit. So Maria, meanwhile, says that I love that. I love her response here. She's pretty much like, you know, I did see a future, but, you know, I have I have some questions of my own now. Yeah. Basically, she's like, this is affecting our what we have. And if you doubt me, then I doubt us. Like, how yeah. could she not? And Joey responds to this. Yeah. He seems to appreciate it. I've always said I love it when contestants find a way to even that power dynamic out. And Maria did with this answer. You know what I think about Joey, in addition to all the other good things I've been thinking about? Him? Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I've got, I think I've got a little man crush Have on Have you Joey. been laying awake at night thinking about all the things you like about Joey? <laughs> okay. I think that he has a very good read. He does. I've noticed that. I watch him looking and I see he's processing. Mm-hmm. He knows the liars. Yes. He cuts through the bullshit. He does, to the point where he sends Sydney home here. We were almost disappointed. <laughs> yeah. It was too quick a death. <laughs> of course, we wanted Maria to stay and for yeah. Sydney to go. But I wanted to watch watch Sydney more. Yeah, she was such a delectable villain. Or at least get like a Ned Stark style execution. <laughs> Andy, you did say she deserves more than a quick punishment. Yeah, bring her to Malta. Reenact. <laughs> <laughs> On her way out, she says, I just hope you're conscious of your decision. And in her ITM, she says, Maria sucks. Mm. And she says she's going to go home and see her cats. Ah, Andy, you it. screamed, damn it. Ah, Do you want to so explain? So close. Yeah, I mean, you know, now I can't fully hate on her. Because she's a cat person? Yeah, I, there's a little bit. Now I have to, you know, I have to pull back a little bit. I'm going to be honest. Cat people are not all great. You're right. You know what? You're They're right. They're really not. Sometimes they could be terrible. Cat people range from being the very best people to the very worst people. Yeah. In my opinion. 
Mostly the best. I actually, and we learned soon that I th- that the reason they let Sydney go is because apparently they had someone waiting in the wings. I think they would have kept Sydney around had it not seemed like Leia would be ready to take yeah. the baton. It's like a so villain Pez dispenser. Like- <laughs> Next. <laughs> Anyway, Maria gets the rose and they dance to Schubert's Ave Maria. And now we have the rose ceremony cocktail party the next day. There was something of interest here. Medina is heard saying that she's sad Sydney went home, but she's going to try to focus on Joey now. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. Someone doesn't sound like a good friend. So there's some one on one time here. Jen, they put their feet in the pool. And she's this good teasing chemistry here where she's making fun of his feet. Edwina has time. Caitlin has time. Medina gives him a little night figurine. Turns out the capital of Malta is Medina and it's a city closed in by walls. Wow. I thought that was. Yeah. Well done. Very symbolic. Yes. Very nice. Very well done, Medina. She reveals she has a hard time opening up and trusting. They do a very mild trust fall. Meanwhile, now this is the big talking point. Leia is upset that women aren't more upset about Sydney having gone home. Uh, Particularly Medina. She says, if I were Sid, I'd be really disappointed. Andy, you said, Leia, go back to the studio audience. (laughs) She says she's going to have to step up and be brave. She has a voice. She's going to use it. Meanwhile, Kelsey A. gives Joey a handmade postcard. Cute. Cute. I like Kelsey, Kelsey A. A. Come on. Now that What's is someone who like? stays out of drama. You can't not like Kelsey A. It's you can not love Kelsey A., but you can't not like her. Okay. So Leia finally confronts Medina here. Mm. She says Medina was saying Sydney was her best friend. And yet in front of Maria, her narrative changes. And she says things like, I'm so happy for you. And you look so good to Maria. <laughs> it's ridiculous. What is she talking about? Why did, what, what narrative? Why do you have to have a narrative in and, this situation? And apparently, why is it like, and my enemy is also your enemy? Yeah, it's like kindergarten. Yes. Medina. I loved Medina here. Oh, I wanted to give her a big it. hug. She really redeemed herself. And oh, not yeah. that I, I, you know what? Redeemed herself. Medina didn't need to redeem herself i don't think medina has done that much wrong no sydney made medina worse than she was which is not bad and i think sydney even convinced medina that she felt worse about the whole you you're not old not validating feelings feeling bullied thing than medina ever actually felt yes she spread her sickness yes medina says i don't need to be mean to maria to be friends with sydney thank you (sighs) and she says she's hard enough on herself she doesn't need leia telling her how to behave I loved this answer. Leia says she holds herself and her close circle of friends to a really high standard and says they just have different morals and values. So in other words, she's now morally superior to Mm -hmm. Medina and her friends and herself are morally superior to anyone who's not in their friend circle. Yeah, apparently. This is so condescending. When someone says we have different morals and values, we've talked about this in other episodes. I think once was a caller episode. Also in Q&As, we've talked about this. I have such a peeve. Yeah, it's not like you're saying your morals are better than mine, so I can't (laughs) hang out with you. That's never what you're saying. And Medina says, I guess we can just agree to disagree, which I thought was a really... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Diplomatic. Diplomatic way of closing this. Yes. Medina really- Nailed you it. You know, I hate to say it. One of these girls is 23 years old. The other one's 31. Yes. You can tell. She put the child in her place. You know what yes. she did? She sent her to the corner. Yes. She said, we're going to continue finger painting without you causing disturbances. Yes. Yeah. And actually when they part ways, Leia swears. She's like- yeah bleeping bleep. like medina's the bad guy yeah but also even that was like a child being sent to the corner yeah. being like ah. <laughs> yeah, she she's came breaking off everything so immature here it was painful because it she also had that air of like of uh superiority oh and you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna lay a real insult on leia oh and i'm gonna say that she is an amateur version of sydney <laughs> she can't even Burn. do sydney well <laughs> Well, you know, I think that she is a student of the School of Sydney. Yeah, she will get there. Yeah, she has yeah, been she has time. S- Sydney's right-hand woman. Yeah. But I agree. I feel like this entire exchange, Sydney would be like, no, young grasshopper, let yeah, me yeah. show you the ways. Yeah. The real way to hurt Medina for, betra- quote unquote, betraying me is to now make her life miserable in this more underhanded way. Right. Meanwhile, Leia just sort of went straight to She just to said it. the thing. Yes. She started the fight yeah. outwardly. Yeah. But at least, you know, Medina knew what she was dealing with in that moment. Oh, 
She laid the smack down. Uh, I loved Medina Beautiful. here. Beautiful. Leia really thought she was going to somehow come out on top with that. Well, it's to the point where I think that she thought Medina looked bad in this conversation. And that's what's so amazing to me. Because uh. then she proceeds to go to talk to Joey. She says they were shocked by his decision with Sydney, but she trusts his intuition and says, this is my favorite one, I know you're smart. To me, that strikes me as very manipulative, is to put him on the defensive about his intuition, about his intelligence. Yeah, know your place. Yeah. Who the hell are you? <laughs> you're here because of the audience. <laughs> yeah, you should still be in the audience. You should be one of those signs, like, we love Joey. <laughs> Andy, you thought that she knew that she has no shot and is playing the villain. Yeah, she's playing for the for a good exit. I don't think so. I hate to say it. I don't. Oh, she think, thinks she has a shot. No, I think that she thinks that she's doing the right thing. Oh dear, that's I, even worse. That's scary, right? Uh, we have to talk about how Maria approaches Medina here mm. and says it's not cool what Leia did. You know, it's you know, yeah. word travels fast, and Medina reveals Leia said. Medina's basically the reason Sydney went home. Oh dear. I guess because of the old stuff. And what Maria child. cries in the group, and Leia seems to derive joy from this and calls Maria a cry baby. And mm -hmm. so this episode wraps with Maria tearfully saying she wants to leave. I mean I mean, I don't blame her. Oh. I don't blame her for expressing those feelings. Whenever anyone uses that against them, okay, so it's like you bully someone to the point where they're crying all the time. Yeah. And then you call them a crybaby. And then because they feel so ostracized, they, they say they want to leave. And then you're like, well, how serious can you be about Joey if you want to leave? Yeah. Oh. You really can't win. How serious? Yeah, that's the thing. It's quicksand. Okay, so that brings us to episode five, and we open with haunting music. And Leia continuing to tell Joey she's trying to navigate this with grace. She's hoping and praying that even with Maria still being there, they can have a fresh start. How can you possibly do that with Maria still there? <laughs> you know, back when we saw that clip of Sydney and Leia on the couch... And, and there was a suggestion that maybe Leia was team Sydney and she was like, oh, I'd like someone to go home. I was like, no, Leia, it's, you know, that was just an unflattering moment. Like there's, Leia's not like that. I, I, I hate to say this, but I right out of the gate didn't like Leia. <laughs> You were waiting till now to reveal yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I told you so. It's just, it's just the truth. I'm not supposed to say that. Okay, so now it's the rose ceremony. Getting the last rose, unsurprisingly, is Leia. We've seen it a million yeah. times. Andy, though, you said, oh, you fucking predictable, stupid show. <laughs> I apologize. That was not nice. Going home are Edwina and Allison. What a big hit. This one hurt both of them, but especially <sighs> Edwina. Edwina. She was like a keel. On this ship. Yes. And I know that her and Joey didn't really ever have a strong connection. No. I get that. But I would have liked to see her stay around for a couple more episodes. I am going to say something. I think anytime anyone gets extra time, like bonus time with Joey on a group date situation, they are never going far. We yes. have enough evidence of that. So Edwina was one mm -hmm. from that uh, capture the heart game. Right. And then... In episode four, Autumn won the time from the night oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. The night it's almost like a consolation prize. Yeah, and then in this episode five, later on, the painting, the art one, Jess gets the the one on one time later on. But we all so know the her, writings on the wall now her, for Jess. Her days are yeah. numbered. Yeah, I just think that they almost do it just to give someone a little boost who's mm -hmm. never going to get a one on one date. Yeah. But you need to make them think that there's something to fight for with the guy. Honestly, I got to hand it to production this year. I agree. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Not just production, but just the whole casting, the whole structure. You know, you know the architect, the person who, who drew the, the blueprints uh -huh. for this season and said, you know, no, we need, you know, supports here and you can go off yep. this way. And they're like, no, no, we can't do that. It's going to collapse in the wind. Like, no, no, no. Trust I me, I'm with this. Well, I know how to do this. I Someone's smart. I agree. <laughs> Andy, what a rave review. You know what? I totally agree. There's something kind of old school feeling about this season. They cast based on personality. Like they they got their Sydneys and their yeah. Leas and their yeah. and their Marias. You know, it's uh -huh. not like Maria. I, I don't think Maria's done anything wrong, but it's not like mm. she's not rubbing some people wrong sure. in some way. So like they cast these people and then they let the explosion start, and that's when they start manipulating. Yeah. That's when they start sending a certain girl into 
interrupt something else, like a key moment is when they sent Maria to talk to Medina about the you're not old thing. It's when Medina was setting up her space to see Joey. She thought Joey was coming. Little things like that. I don't blame the show for puppeteering moments like that. Oh, yeah, no, of course. That's just, you're just making the most with what you've got. I agree. What bothers me is when they make an entire villain, entire plot point, entire conflict based on fluff, on something that never happened. Yeah, and I was worried when they did the first with the audience pick, which was yes. kind of dumb. Yeah. And then with the, uh, the card, the card yeah. I was worried. Me too. But that was it. It yeah. ended there. Yeah. It's kind of an entertaining season. Yeah, yeah come on. You got to give compliments where they're due. Yes. I mean, you can criticize. But but they're they're doing a great job this yes. season. Rock it in your pocket with rocket money, money full of pockets, rocket <laughs> money. I respect how badly you wanted to rhyme pocket with rocket. Yeah, it really doesn't work because rocket comes first. Yes. But yes. you know, I gave it a shot. <laughs> yes, and I think we all got the gist because rocket money will rocket money into your pocket. It fills your pockets with rockets of money. Honestly, it more so keeps money from rocketing out of your pocket. It (laughs) drips out of your pocket, but rocket money rockets it back into your pocket. Because we are all bleeding money online, especially with subscriptions we've often forgotten about, with bills we're paying too much for. Meanwhile, with rocket money, they will negotiate lower bills for you. They help you identify and cancel those unwanted subscriptions, and they monitor your spending all in one place. Who doesn't like saving money? Everyone likes saving money. Doesn't matter how much money you have, everyone likes saving money. It's so true. And sometimes when you see like TV shows about the rich and famous, they also love saving money. They like saving money more than anyone. That's why they're rich. (laughs) And rich or not, over 80% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. Mm -hmm. And I was totally one of those people. You know what I was doing is I was spending double online storage. I was paying for two separate ones. Like I, I just would have needed never one. Known that. No, yeah, I was like, well, I need them, whatever. And then, no, I didn't. I only needed one. Now I'm saving like more than fifty percent of what I was spending on that category. You know what Rocket Money is? Rocket Money is a house cat to the mice that try to live in your house. The mice are all these online businesses trying to take your money, mm-hmm. and Rocket Money is that kitty that comes along and be like. <laughs> So Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps find and cancel your subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. With over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. That's actually insane, that number. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash shandy. That's rocketmoney.com slash shandy, rocketmoney.com slash shandy. Oh, wow. Look at us looking so fancy. Yes. Do we look like we've made it? We we look like we've made it. We look like we've made it because we're wearing our Jenny Kane sweaters. The best gift, I gotta say. Oh, gift? Forget about it. I gotta say, when these came in the mail, I was like, ooh. Because Jenny Kane, is, they just know what they're doing. They use the best fabrics, the best cut. It's luxury. That's what it is. And let's talk about versatility. Yes. Three weeks in Australia, you had two Jenny Kane sweaters, and uh-huh. that lasted you fine. It was unbelievable. It was so much colder there than I thought it was going to be. I did not bring enough sweaters. I only had this cashmere sweater. This is the oatmeal and also the black one. I layered them on top of each other at one point. They could go with dressy outfits. Like when we went to a nice dinner and it was chilly, I would bring one of the sweaters to wear, you know, to wear on top, like closed or open. Or if it was sort of like a schlubby day and I was just going to get breakfast or something, no matter what, I could look put together in Jenny Kane. Everything they make is so thoughtfully designed and you can always tell when it comes time to put looks together, which things do I reach for? It's these cardigans. These are the cashmere cocoon cardigans. I now have three colors. You guys have heard me talk about them. They've just been such a game changer in my wardrobe. I've actually eliminated, and you've been happy about this because there's a little more room in the apartment, but I've gotten rid of some other cardigans that were taking up as much space, but that aren't as versatile. The versatility is key. So find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code DEARSHANDY at checkout. That's JennyKane.com, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code DEARSHANDY for 15% off. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. All right, so we are now in Andalusia, Spain. The ladies are drinking sangria out and about, and Joey rolls up in a Vespa where he whisks off Kelsey A. Mm. The ladies look pretty down about this. Mm. I think this is the first time I really bought 
that they were down. Yeah, I'd be down I mean, too. Kelsey T especially started to spiral here. Maria, you know, they're making conversation, right? We have to remember that a producer is like, okay, girls, talk. Talk yeah. amongst yourselves. Yeah. How do you feel about Kelsey A being taken off? And Maria asks if Leia had kept her steal a date card and someone else had, you know, she had kept it but didn't want to use it. So she gave it to someone else. Someone else had taken it. Would they have used it on this Vespa moment? And Kelsey T openly admits that she would have thought about it. And Leia somehow finds a way to seem offended by Maria's question. She acts sort of holier than that. Yeah. Here's the thing is I agree with Leia's reasoning. She's like, I don't want to have to use tricks. Like I either have something with Joey or not. I, mean, I totally agree with that. But there's, there's this sort of, there's, like I said, a holier than thou element to the way Leia responds. Well, to- she, she holds herself to a higher moral standard. <laughs> Okay, so Kelsey A, she and Joey shop for ingredients for a picnic. They play soccer in a square. They make a wish by a fountain. And of course, they're, as usual, asked by an elderly couple if they're married. (laughs) (laughs) We learn in passing that she does art nights at her house. Cute. I wanted to know more about this. And during their picnic, Kelsey A tells him she's not falling yet, but she's tripping. I thought that was cute. Now in the evening, they eat dinner in a 13th century bathhouse. She's wearing, we have to talk about her outfit, a lovely high neck sleeveless dress. It's in blue. I liked the cut of this dress, but the reason I'm mentioning this is to say her hair really needed to be up. You guys knew I was going to comment on this. Just it was such a lovely, elegant, understated neckline. And then her hair was just, I mean, Mm. I love Kelsey A's hair, by the way. She's got Julia Roberts circa pretty woman hair. Okay, A lot of Julia Roberts circa pretty woman. Oh, yeah. Personality, too. Personality? A little bit. I don't know about personality, actually. Oh, okay. I think not at all personality. Just looks? Okay, I'll take that. (laughs) But she's she's so gorgeous, right? She's got like this big curly hair. I just really, you know, and Kelsey A, by the way, to her credit, does do an updo a low do like she does things with her hair but for me with this dress oh she needed to have something just letting that high neck be the star yeah so the worst thing kelsey has done so far yes is not had her hair up with that dress precisely she shares now about her mom her parents met in the military both military police officers and when kelsey was born her mom left the army 10 years ago she was diagnosed with breast cancer it had metastasized on her bones Mm. they gave her six months to live but she only lived for two more very heartbreaking you can tell they were very close by how she has a hard time even getting through the story and joey this is very sweet he says the quality she describes in her mom he sees in her and as he presents her with the rose he says he was looking for someone who's kind compassionate loving and understanding and her mom would be so proud of the woman she's been through this journey joey joey and can we talk about the adjectives adjectives specificity yes you believe what joey says Mm -hmm. he's not just it's not just rote commentary it's actual feelings he really believes it they make out and in his itm joey says it was a very special day and he is smitten and they dance outside i think he is smitten yeah i I don't think you use the word smitten unless you're smitten it's a dangerous thing to say yeah occasionally i feel like people say they're smitten and i'm like Mm, yeah I'm like, are you smitten? Yeah. You should use that word with care. I would never say I'm smitten unless I was smitten. Good. Back at the hotel, the group date card arrives going on the state are Lexi, Daisy, Jen, Autumn, Maria, Caitlin, Medina, Leia, Jess, and Kelsey T, meaning Rachel will get this one-on-one. I was not surprised not by surprised this. At all. I think we all thought Rachel would be sort of shooting up at some point. Yeah. And that sounds weird. <laughs> and now it's shooting good- <laughs> up. Uh, Rising up. Sorry? Rising uh, yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, let's you. go with that. So on this group date, they meet an artist who tells them they will come up with a quote uh, regarding their relationship with Joey and mm. then convey that meaning through painting. And Joey, once again, similar to the sausage wheel thing, yeah. he partakes. Yeah. I love this. So cute. I would have been so psyched not to partake in that. I know. I w- actually think, Andy, that you wouldn't have partaken took in no. either the sausage wheel or the painting no, activity absolutely definitely not the sausage yeah, wheel no way that's not very chivalrous of you oh you would have been in the sidelines just laughing that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's not something to be proud of 
Sorry. Okay, so the main person's painting to talk about here is Jess, who paints two big rings and says, "Our love is as bright as the diamond I hope to receive." Okay. And she, you know, she talks so, about their love. so this, I want to talk about this for a second. Okay. Because what you said earlier about that consolation prize they give to people, yeah. To me, this rings true because this was the worst of all of them. Mm -hmm. The worst quote and the worst painting. Yeah. I'm not saying the painting was skillfully poor. No. I mean, I couldn't have painted a better ring than well, that. Well, if it was based on skill, I think Leia probably Oh, yeah. If won. it was based on skill, there were other winners. Yeah. And I'm saying this had neither the skill level, the creativity level. You're right. She was given this. Like, we have to give it to her. Do you think that woman, you think that mixed media <laughs> artist was like, let me see who won here. And she went to, you know, call a friend and be like, yeah. what do you think about these? Totally. No, she was told by a producer, like, just give it to Jess. Yes. I just don't understand why what Jess said here was any more meaningful than what anyone else said. No, she, I think Jess had the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kind of agree yeah. because I actually think to just, you know, Joey in, in explaining why it made sense was like, oh, well, you know, Jess is the one who focused on the end, like yeah. the, the engagement. Yeah. But, you know, I actually think to focus on the end, on the engagement versus what's currently happening in your connection is to make it as impersonal as possible. Yeah. It's like if Joey was super rich, if you just drew a picture yeah. of money. <laughs> I mean, she kind of almost did that by just yeah. painting a big diamond and being yeah. like, our love is as bright as the diamond I hope to receive. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to share in the riches of our love. <laughs> so yeah, Jess wins somehow. And I do really think that this was produced. I think that yeah. Jess probably was struggling a bit and needed to feel a boost. You know, yeah. she, it has been a while since she got, I think, an early group date rose and and I think she's probably been feeling a little invisible. This is a perfect way to give her that moment without costing an entire one-on-one yeah. -on -one yes. date. Yes. And she and Joey put on swimsuits and do the whole body painting, yeah, painting yeah. on a oh, giant yeah, sheet of paper good. thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a hot scene. For some reason, the, the, the swimming around in paint gets me. Oh, you think so? Yeah, it gets me every time. You know what I always feel that they do wrong? Is they, they mix the colors around too much. Too much color. I think I'm too... It should be one color. Yeah, or I think I'm always too focused on it being like an actual neat painting where you can sort of be like, oh, that's where my butt was. That's where my foot was. Oh. Instead, it's too much rubbing around and making out and then it's just, it all looks kind of brown. You know, I'm with you on Am this I one. Am I focusing no, on the wrong no, thing? No, no, I'm 100% <laughs> with you. I think I think that one color should be used and maybe at the end for dessert, there's another color. I think that what you should do is each be in one color. Yeah. Okay. And then you like plant yourself down like like sort of- Like twister. Yeah, you, you make a shape with your body so you can see your two bodies and then you get off and that's when you make out and you have the nice image. Huh. <laughs> well, it was a waste I think of this... 10 seconds. <laughs> I think about this every time a couple does this. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm just like, it's all brown and messy. You know, and I trust you. Your aesthetics are very good. <laughs> brown and messy. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the tagline for the season. Two little things that were sort of easy to miss here. One is a voiceover of Maria saying that for once she's jealous of Jess. Yeah. Like for once she's a little jealous of Which Jess. Which was a backhanded. Yeah. It was a little odd. It was a voiceover. We didn't see it coming out of her mouth. The other one is Leia in her ITM kind of mocking Jess for having... Yeah. She was like, well, she painted rings. It was yeah. like... She was Even sort of Leia like, got in on the action. She was, Jess is one of the circle. She's a Sydney girl. Yes. I mean, how is that different from Edwina commenting on how Lexi didn't deserve the the prize for having kissed him mm -hmm. because she hadn't put effort in and then Sydney was like, well, Lexi's one of my girls. So, oh, right. Just saying. Okay, so now it's the evening. There is a montage of peaceful time. There's tinkly music. You can tell that something's brewing. Jen, we're basically showing them talking about how good they are. They always go out of their way to show Jen and Joey. You mm -hmm. notice that? Yeah. They never skip Jen and Joey. To Why? the point where it makes me now wonder if Jen's going to make it really far. So you think she is going to make it no, far? No, I think she's not. Right. Was they showing too much of yeah, her? They yeah. They always make a point of showing Jen's one-on-one -on -one mm. time. And Kelsey T, she is my best dress. Mm. She is wearing an asymmetrical, off-the-shoulder, white, long sleeve knit dress. She's got these barrettes in her hair. I thought she looked gorgeous. It's not berets. Oh, it's barrettes. <laughs> 
<laughs> never mind. I didn't say that. We'll pretend you didn't yeah, say that. Never happened. And back at the hotel now, Rachel gets the date card she's always wanted, which is dancing in Spain. So on this date. <laughs> is that really what she's always wanted? <laughs> I mean, she says that she has, she's made that clear to Joey that that's okay. what she's wanted. All right, fine. Yeah. Dancing in Spain. Dancing. I mean, that's, yeah, it's doable. <laughs> Maria now with Joey. He says she mentioned she was raised mostly by men, which is why she thinks she's a little rough around the edges. Mm -hmm. I thought this was interesting because we did not actually hear that conversation. He's sort of filling in the blanks for us. And now she reveals that when she was little, she didn't know why her mom wasn't around. She reveals she and her mom got into a very bad car accident when she was only one to the point where she was announced dead at the scene. And the fact that she survived was deemed to be a miracle in the local news. Her mom broke countless bones, became deeply depressed, wasn't around for much of her childhood. Really sad. She says she knows how quickly things can change. And so she tries to cherish what she has and see the positive in things. I thought this was a really lovely conversation. Yeah. It also explained a lot about why Maria is the way she is. You know, like I see her trying to be positive. Okay. So Joey gives Maria this rose. Liz is obviously annoyed but we'll get to that so rachel on her one-on-one now they learn a flamenco dance which they have to then perform in front of an audience this is kind of drawn out yeah. if i'm honest i found this state sort of too long and repetitive yeah. for not a lot of payoff there yeah. was a lot of like oh when i look at rachel i feel this connection blah 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 but the actual footage they showed to that voiceover i was not convinced well you know what i've started doing is i i leave my phone upstairs when i watch the shows now Mm -hmm. because up until now i've had it next to me and sometimes i reach for it Mm -hmm. this is instinct yes we're all addicted but i found myself reaching for a phantom phone during this day (laughs) and i was disappointed it wasn't there to be honest with you yeah i found this day a little slow the daytime portion i don't think there's there's a connection here I don't buy it. I do think that there's like a conversational connection. There's a friend connection. Yes. I don't feel romance here. Well, so in the evening, first, Andy, as they toasted, you said that's a lot of meal. Oh. The meals that were getting wasted here. Those were- plates were really stacked. Can't they have it a little more delicate? I know. Like it maybe a little more nouveau small. cuisine, like yeah. have a little tiny thing with some balsamic yes. drizzled around yeah. it. Why do they have the whole plate <laughs> stuffed to the brim? Yeah. She shares she was born and raised in Hawaii. As he knows, she moved to go into nursing. She's in ICU. She takes on a lot emotionally. She sees a lot every day. That does have to be rough. And he says she deserves to be cared for, to feel safe. She says she's realizing she's deserving of that. This is a nice conversation. Yeah, it's nice. I just was not like, wow, romance. I just wasn't feeling it. No electricity. Yeah. The plug isn't in the wall. Yeah, that's how I felt. It's sort of similar to the Lexi date where I was like, usually after one-on-one, I'm like, wow, this person's going far. That's how I felt about Kelsey A. Yeah. You know, they had their one-on-one date and I was like, damn, Kelsey A is going to be hard to beat. This one, once again, I was like, okay, I can see Rachel making it pretty far. I can see her even making final four, but I was left wanting more from this one-on-one date, especially based on their banter. Whenever we've seen clips of them leading up to this, I was really more convinced by romance here than I was on this date. Yes, agreed. Anyway, Joey gives her the rose while saying he's all about the slow burn. That's sort of the theme. And they get a fireworks show and make out. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe other people see it more so than we do. The next day, we see a short clip of Jesse and Joey playing a seemingly very high-level game of tennis. look good. I was thinking this has to be more fun for Jesse than usual, right? Oh, yeah. And now it's the Rose Ceremony cocktail party. Going into it, Leia is heard saying, you got to put your best foot forward and know how to dress. Peep the dress, peep the earrings, all these things. It definitely feels like they're trying to make her... Yeah, look bad. Look wor- even worse. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not defending Leia in general because it mm. really bothered me what she said to Medina. Yeah. Actually, this was gratuitous. Yeah. Uh, I actually wish they didn't go so far with little things like this because it takes away... From- yeah, yeah. Let her be awful in, yes. in the obvious ways. Yes. I don't need you to tell me she's awful. Yeah, because she likes her earrings. Yeah. <laughs> So Daisy, one-on-one time, she asks how Joey's doing with this experience. I loved this conversation. You know, it honestly, he doesn't really say much of note here, but just the dynamic shift of her being like, how are you doing? Tell me about how this has been emotionally for you and how responsive he is to that. They end up making out here and Andy... You were very convinced by this chemistry. Mm -hmm. That kiss, you see, he's really, he lingers in. 
He's in the zone there. With Daisy. Yeah, there's that kissing zone. There's like, okay, so you have one guy here and the girl here. Yeah. And then sometimes the girl comes here. Yeah. And he remains there in the kiss. Yes. And sometimes he goes. Yeah. And he goes there. But sometimes they meet in the middle <laughs> and they just kind of... <laughs> Oh, oh, Andy, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. What you said at the time was he doesn't receive. He lingers in. He goes in and savers. Mm. He's not doing it. He's not like, oh, it's kissing time. Let's do the kiss. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. But he goes in. He's like, I'm going to stay here for a while. He sets up shop is what I'm saying. Okay, with Daisy. Yeah. Is it, to me, it's clear. Oh, wow. Well, you think yeah. Daisy's winning. Kelsey, too. He's got the same kind of thing with Kelsey, but with Daisy, it's kind of like, I really, he he's in there. Savoring. He's in the pocket. Okay. I also have to quickly touch on Daisy's look here. Not quite best dress, but very, very close. She was wearing an olive green gown that crisscrossed her in the neck and was had a big open back down below, and she had her hair tousled and back, and she just looked gorgeous. She had, you know, nice earrings. The reason it isn't my best dress is just like it was lacking an element of like mm, something that made it interesting and kind of, I don't know, something. Okay. But she styled it well. She looked gorgeous. I just, yeah, it was beautiful. I, I mentioned it because it's good. I'm just saying it's not the best. <laughs> so you're somehow insulting her? <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned it at all. <laughs> you hold her to a higher moral standard. <laughs> So the main talking point here is Jess spiraling. I have to point out that she's spiraling throughout. We see him have time with each Jen, Kelsey T, Autumn, and Caitlin. And meanwhile, it's to the tune of Jess freaking out about feeling left behind, not having time with him, yada, yada. So Caitlin is interrupted by Maria, who's obviously extremely apologetic to be doing so. And Caitlin's like, don't worry, girl. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's totally fine. And... Caitlin reports this back to the group that she was dun, interrupted dun, by dun. Maria and just proceeds to lose her shit. Yeah. And she says, quote, it's giving disrespect on all fucking sides. So, okay. I think, says, I think Jess drinks too much. Oh, is yeah. that what you think it is? I think she's a drinker. I think Jess is the girl at the bar who's always too drunk. Stays a little too late. Yeah, she says things that are probably not not good the I, next day. I have to point out, it's giving disrespect on all fucking sides. This really? is coming from the girl who on night one came back from her first time ever talking with him and reports to the entire room of women that she had a kiss. Exactly. Thank you. And we also have to add to the mix a couple of things. First of all, do I think Maria needed to take time with Joey? No, I do not. But we always have to remember that there is puppeteering going on. When Maria approached Caitlin, it almost seemed like she was coming upstairs and did not know that she would be interrupting someone. No. She was so apologetic that she was like, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to yeah, yeah. And I, we all know, you guys know by now, we talk about this all the time. Every time anyone interrupts anyone, they have been sent to do so. Mm -hmm. A producer mm -hmm. has yeah. been like, it's your turn. You yeah. are up. Yep. It's time to interrupt. Yeah. Look, you could argue Maria has a rose and therefore she should just sit pretty and not do anything. And I was that girl on my season, episode four in Seoul. I had a rose from a one-on-one -on -one day and I made it very clear I am not going to try to get time at this rose ceremony cocktail party just to make sure other people have time but I did not have to do that mm -hmm. that's just me because I'm extremely conflict yeah, averse you took any opportunity not to be on camera <laughs> too. But basically, it's not Maria's job to make sure that Jess has one-on-one -on -one time. Of course. And the person who ensured that Jess would not get one-on-one -on -one time at this rose ceremony cocktail party is Jess. That's right. Because she's the one who was unraveling and spiraling and starting to freak out about not getting time. The quicksand, as you put it. Yeah. The more you freak out about not having time, the less likely it is you will have time. Yeah. Speaking of Maria here, we have to quickly talk about her dress. I loved this black sleeve. Mm. Dress I liked it too. With yeah, sort of a belt detail, sort of like potential side boob on the side, and then there was like another belt down below in the back, like kind of coming out of nowhere. Very cool dress. I just wish her hair oh, had hair. been up. Oh, it looked like she was trying on the dress in the store with mm. her hair the same way it always is. I think this would have been very cool with an updo, like a dramatic updo, and like a I don't know, either a bold lip or a cat eye, mm. something. Yeah. Yeah. Personally. Okay, so now Maria returns to the group from having stolen Joey oh, from dear. Caitlin. And Jess looks at her and says, pretty early convo for someone with a rose. And Maria says, 
Yup. <laughs> 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 and there's a long pause and Maria says, you have a problem with that? Yeah. What's interesting about this exchange now is this is, in my opinion, the most reactive we have seen Maria. Yes. By far, yeah. right? It was very clear here, we now know, that Maria does not respond well to passive aggression. Mm-hmm. She would rather you just say it. And no one should respond well to passive aggression. I mean, I agree. I can't stand passive aggression. Yeah. Just say, hey, I'm kind of like upset that you you took him. You have a rose. I haven't had time yet. Yeah. You should have made sure we all had time before doing that. And I think Maria would have responded oh, she to that. she would have hashed it out. She even said that she would have responded yes. better to that. Passive aggression is the worst. Remember, it's an attack. Passive is irrelevant. It's really just aggression. Yeah. It's cowardly aggression. It is cowardly. Yeah, in front of everybody. Well, Maria comes after here, here. I mean, this is where we see Maria... I, I think she came too hard, if I'm honest. Not because I think that Jess didn't deserve it or that Maria shouldn't defend herself. I really think it's clear Maria has reached her breaking point. That's that's it. She yeah. reached her breaking point. This was the straw. I can't and, knock her. Yeah, she was ready to just, she was like, you have a problem with that? Like she went there. Yeah. I just, for me, I'm just thinking in Maria's best interests. Yeah. And I don't think it's a great look for her to, to snap at something like this because to a lot of people, her reaction might've seemed like an overreaction. Sure. But she had it. It's enough. Yeah, I mean, I agree. There's a heated exchange here where Maria tells Jess to grow up. And Jess is like, you grow the fuck up, bitch. (laughs) Nailed it. So you think she was drunk? I think it's not her friend on the show. The highlight for me is Autumn in the background, just like grinning ear to ear, enjoying the show. Of course, as Jess leaves the scene, Leia follows her to comfort her. So, of course, like clockwork, while Jess is off crying, Jesse arrives to cancel the rest of the cocktail party, tells them they have no more time. They're going to the rose ceremony. And so that's the irony of all this. Jess was so busy blaming Maria for taking time away. What she did, her own reaction is what kept her from having one-on-one time. It's a little bit like the, like Sydney, like I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this two-on-one date. The reason there is a two-on-one date is because of your reaction. Here, it's exact same thing. Stay classy. Stay calm. And calm. And carry on. All right, so now we have this rose ceremony. Going home are Medina and Autumn. Another big hit. Yeah. Medina going home with that was really a bummer. But we kind of knew. Medina was such a class act. Like, I loved how she handled Leia at the last episode. And really, the reason we haven't seen much of her is because she lays so low. You know, she was, you really get the sense that she was trying to snuff all this. And it cost her. Going back to the old folks' home. (laughs) Jess got that last rose. Very unsurprising. Turns out they're going to Montreal next. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Andy, that brings us to the end of episodes four and five. Who is your A game winner? Medina. Okay. Yeah, handled Leia perfectly. I mean, that took balls. Yeah. It took balls to stand up to her. I love how she said, I'm hard enough on myself. Yeah. She's like, How dare you? It's beautiful. It reminds me of when someone's like, I'm very, I'm disappointed in you. Mm. I'm like, Disappointed in me? Yeah. Like, trust me, I, I am more disappointed in myself than you could ever be most of the time. How dare you? That's a great comeback. <laughs> and that was the gist of that conversation. Leah was like, I'm so... She didn't use the word disappointed, but we knew what she meant. Yeah, it was a power play. It, She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach I'm you a lesson. I'm judging you. I'm, yeah, you're doing this wrong. Yeah. I would do it differently with can my different morals. If, can you imagine? Yeah, her, her higher moral standards. Can you imagine being 31 and having a 23-year-old tell you your behavior? <laughs> It's inappropriate. <laughs> so that brings us, Andy, to our word watch. I cannot believe this, but there were zero manipulatives across wow. both episodes. Amazing. We did not see that coming. So how many correct guesses were there? 139. Wow. And our winner is Lauren Livingston. Congratulations. You are the winner of a whopping $200 to spend at Cozy Earth. Mm, Great prize. Very nice. Congratulations. Please email us by this Friday at midnight to claim your prize. And Andy, what is the word for next week? Sucks. (laughs) Okay. In any context. Any context. Okay. Sucks on a candy. Somewhere. Sucks, just sucks. So if you would like a chance to win a prize, a great prize, yeah. we have a new prize again. We do. Then you must guess the number of times you predict the word sucks. Not suck. 
Not suck. Just sucks. Or sucked. Not sucked either. Just, or not sucking. Okay. Just sucks. Sucking is pretty... I mean, that's not going to happen. I don't think so. But no form of sucking... No, no form of suck, except for sucks. <laughs> you must guess the number of times the word sucks will be uttered in episode six. You must do so by commenting either below this recap or over on the Instagram post for this recap. Uh, you must use the numeral of the number of times. Oh, yeah. Do not email us. Do not DM us your submissions. You can you can do so for fun. No. But if you're trying to enter WordWatch, please do not email us or DM us just because we we want you to have a chance of winning. And if you do that, you will not be entered. So please comment. And if you guess correctly, you will be entered in a draw and one name will be plucked and that person will win. Andy? $150 to spend at Pro's Custom Hair Care. Yes. Pro's is a longtime sponsor of ours. Yes. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yes, pros made to order custom hair care. You guys have heard us talk about them for a long time. They're a long time sponsor. We're such big fans. You basically fill out their online hair consultation and they take 85 personal factors into account when designing your bespoke hair care program. We don't leave home without it. No, and it literally has your name on it. That's pretty cool. It is cool. So great prize, $150 in hair care. How can you go wrong? Oh, and you must guess by this Friday at midnight to be entered. Okay, moving on to our predictions. Andy, who's in your top spot? <sighs> this is a toss-up for me, but I'm going to stick with Daisy based solely on that kiss. Ooh, yeah. okay. I mean, I have Kelsey A still. I've had Kelsey in my top spot this whole time, but I see what you see. I have Daisy in my second spot. I have Kelsey A in my second spot. There you go. All right. And it's a nail-biter. Who do you have in your third spot? All right, I'm going to, this is a big shake-up here. Okay. I'm booting Lexi. Ooh. And I'm replacing her with Jen. In third? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I mean, I have Jen in third as well, but I've had Jen in my top four this whole time. You have. What made you put Jen in top four now? She had her one on one last week. Yeah. Well, I, it wasn't that Jen rose up. Jen is maintained. Oh, it's. I like, felt like Lexi, I didn't feel the spark there. Yeah. I just did, that, as, as we were discussing, there's just not a lot going on. Yeah. Well, for me, it was the levity, like I said, yeah. like the humor. It doesn't no feel fun. But we're, I'm not 100% sure he needs that, though. Uh, so who do you have in fourth? Maria. Okay. Oh. Okay, mm. I have Lexi in fourth, so I haven't totally okay. booted her. So that's so interesting because from my perspective, Maria cannot make it super far based on just being in all this drama. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind it's of gonna agree. It's going to catch up with her. I kind of agree, but I think she's going to make it pretty far. I mean, I do think he really likes her. <sighs> I just really wish, and I'm not criticizing her here, but I really wish that she had, and, and I totally get that she was just, she snapped with Jess. And I think I might have as well, but I just don't think that's going to help her long term. Mm. She, it's like you, you, she's forced to be the bigger person over and over and over and over again. And that can get really tiring. I'm sticking with her a little bit out of loyalty. Okay. <laughs> All right, Andy, that is a wrap for this massive recap. Ooh, yeah, ooh wow. That took it out That's of a me. Lot. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify. Please, please. Leave us Apple yes. and Spotify podcast ratings Please. and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. If you want to follow along with us on Love is Blind, please do. And if you're not sure when episodes come up, you should maybe keep an eye on our Instagram because we tend to keep you notified there. And thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye.